What we're going to look at in this video, the fourth in the series, is how Ingleborough's land, landscape, has been used and how those uses have changed and, and why they've changed through the ages. What we've got here, as you can see, rising up the hillside from the wall at the bottom to the wall at the top, is a series of low terraces picked out in some cases by the uh, buttercups. These are lynchets or cultivation terraces and you get these all around Ingleborough, well not, not everywhere but you get them excellent examples at Stainforth, at Landcliffe, there are some right next to Clapham. These are just below Old Road between Clapham and Newby Coat. There are others elsewhere in the dales, I'm sure you've all seen them, particularly in Wharfdale. These rising terraces of lynchets and the sort of similar in terms of use and age, the ridge and furrow, the cordroid ridge and furrow that you get quite a bit of below Old Road between Newby Coat and Cold Coats, these were all used in the past for cultivation. Now it was long thought that the, the lynchets were developed in the medieval period after the Norman conquest but I think it's more likely, much more likely, that they were actually started off in the Anglo-Saxon period and were used through beyond the conquest through the medieval period for cultivation so each member of each family within a particular community would have had their strips so all all of those strips there didn't belong to one person they were actually allocated by the manor court to individuals within the village now in the 14th century there was a dramatic decline in climate really dramatic years with no summer as the records say and it was in the mid or third quarter of the 14th century that really arable cultivation became impossible, too wet, too cold, too damp, too cloudy, the growing season was too short and there was a mass conversion not just in the dales but across the country from cultivation to sheep rearing. So in the 14th century this is probably the last time that these cultivation systems, these terraces, these lynchets were used for subsistence agriculture. Climate change, there's nothing really new about it. In the monastic period, that's sort of from roughly 1200 or a bit before that to the 1530s, 60% of the Yorkshire Dales National Park was owned by one monastery, one abbey or another. From the Lancashire boundary coming down to the Wenning River, up to the top of Ingleborough, across to Wernside, right up to Newby Head, taking in Cam, coming down Ribblesdale, to Low Berkwith and Selside, that was all controlled and owned by Furness Abbey. Now again, it used to be said, which still is to an extent, that the pioneer monks looked for places that were isolated, forested, marshy, you know, the, the equivalent of the biblical Middle Eastern deserts. Well, that doesn't apply here because Furness Abbey actually bought all this land. And just the Southern Scale section, which is from the top of Ingleborough to the top of Wernside, taking in Southern Scales and Ch Chapel of Dale Hamlet itself, up to Brunscar, that they paid £600 for that, which was a colossal amount of money. So what they were buying was not wasteland, they were buying into an already established, managed, agricultural landscape. The picture at the top there is of a dry stone wall. It's a one metre scale there. It's a dry stone wall that is the, the head dike, the head wall for the land between Bleak Bank Farm and Newby Coat. In places the wall is two metres high. You can see there it's, it's nothing like a lot of the walls you see with nice regular courses with stone getting smaller towards the top. This is typical of early walls, and this one here could well be late monastic in period, just bounding, just dividing the, the in by land, the good pastures and the good meadows below, from the open fell on Ingleborough. So that's almost certainly a late monastic wall. Now, in 1619, there was a big dispute between Ostwick 
and Horton in Ribblesdale over grazing rights and, and turbery rights and it went to the royal courts and there were two court cases and in 1619 a map was produced in the hope of settling the dispute once and for all that's 1619 and then on the map it marked towards the head of Crummockdale Brocken Wall and this may well be the Brocken Wall again it's about two meters high it's got all the characteristics of an old wall so if it was Brocken by 1619 then again it's got to be or most probably is a late monastic wall this is not England but I couldn't find it a picture to illustrate what I wanted to show but it's it's typical of landscape anywhere in North Craven you, as you go through time the types of fields the shape of the fields the size of the fields the nature of the walls whether they're straight or wibbly wobbly whether the wall corners are, are angular or rounded shows how things have changed over time this is actually fox up down at the bottom there and at the bottom the bottom meadows there the bottom fields are as indicated in by meadows and pastures so they you can't see any sheep on those fields there because the sheep have been taken off to allow the grass to grow so that the farmers can take a crop of hay or silage off them the walls I mean there's the one that goes underneath where I've written in by meadows and pastures is rather wibbly wobbly and it's the fields the lower fields are irregular the wall on the left going sort of out of the top of the big ash tree is very irregular it's not straight at all it sort of whittles all over the place that's typical of early fields that is you know up to and including say the 16th century when you get beyond those lower fields beyond the ash tree in the middle of the picture and there's a barn just to bit to the left of that those fields are rather longer the walls are rather straighter so you've got an extension of the original in by uphill reclaiming land improving the land and because you've got the three barns there those were used as hay meadows with the cattle stored overnight over winter rather getting the hay storing it there to feed the cattle over winter and spreading the muck on the fields to enable the grass to grow better in the following year and if you get beyond that so going left from the leftmost barn wrapping around that long plantation of conifers you can see the ground is much rougher the wall that goes parallel or the two walls that go parallel to that plantation are absolutely dead straight the wall going over the hill at the back of the picture is absolutely dead straight in plan form so you've got the common pastures on the left there where each farmer within the settlement could take their cattle and sheep and graze them up there in common and then on the right there where it says stinted pastures they were granted allocated a particular number of cattle or sheep gates depending on various factors so the if you look at a landscape look at the fields look at the walls and you can read the landscape chronologically the barn at the bottom there is at Newby Coat on the old road from Clapham to Ingleton and it's a large barn it's very long it's quite a, a wonderful building if you've got any interest in vernacular architecture and you can see on the gable end there which is facing the road old road you've got the two lines the two very steep roof lines of the original building a thatched crook building the picture at the top there shows two barns both in an advanced state of collapse at the deserted farm of Souther Scales just above Chapeldale Hamlet the house is still there and still lived in but it's no longer a farm these Newbicote and Souther Scales were both in use as farmsteads during the monastic period and we saw in the third video that Souther Scales in fact goes right back to the beginning of the Anglo-Saxon period and you get evidence within barns with a lot of barns in the Dales and especially in the Ingleborough area of a very different building from what is seen today from the exterior and we've just got a few shots here of the Newby Coat barn so top left never mind the, the modern brick wall there at the bottom you've got two sandstone coins 
going down from the top of the photograph. Then below that, you've got limestone slabs that stick out about six inches in old money from the line of the wall. And that is what is called a plinth. And it takes the place of foundations which had not been, quote unquote, invented at that time. So if you have a plinth, you're probably looking at a building no later than the 16th century. The bottom left photo shows a whole series, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Never mind the top two. Twelve recesses which are splayed and these are vents to get air into the barn so that the hay wouldn't, you know, combust, self-combust. They're splayed vents and from outside they're very, very narrow slits. On the inside they're wider, casting light from the slit. Slit vents, again, are characteristic of older barns. On the top right, you've got the interior roof of, Newby, of the Newby Court barn, looking towards the gable where you saw the exterior on the previous slide. And you've got trusses there, which have got cuts through the purlins. There's one there, there's one there, there's another one there. You've got peg holes all over the place. These are reused timbers, and you get the same on the other trusses. These are reused timbers. Sadly, we, we hope to date these in, a, the stories in one of the stories in stone projects, but because they're ash, then they cannot be dated using tree ring dating methods. But these are reused timbers, probably from the original Crook building. The bottom right picture there is rather blurred because it was pitch black when I took this photo. Just to the left of the ranging pole, you've got a series of horizontal, big horizontal slabs. They are filling in a void in the wall and it, it's you call it just a recess or whatever you want to. But the crook blade, these big crook timbers, these big crew curving crook timbers that came from the apex of the roof, had their feet within the wall in that now blocked up space. And there are three of those in this barn. So there's all sorts of indicators in this barn, including raised roof lines, that this is a much, much older barn than you see on the exterior. Similarly, up at Clapdale, to the north of Clapham, you've got the Clapdale House, Clapdale Hall there, which is definitely a medieval structure in origin, although it's obviously been rebuilt possibly several times. And then the big barn just to the left, Low Barn as it's called, and you can see two straight joints where outshuts have been added on on both sides. But you can see going from the bottom of the of the main building how the masonry chain changes drastically. And in fact, that below there is, is a double stepped plinth. So we're looking here at a probable medieval barn in origin that's been rebuilt and rebuilt and modified and bits added on and so on to make it what it is now. And this these are the timbers some of the timbers inside that barn up on the top left top right here there's another recess with a peg hole there's one here on the top left a recess with a peg hole these again are reused timbers now fortunately these are oak and the stories in stone tree ring dating program that ran in 2019 proved or confirmed that these timbers were felled between 1563 and 1588. At Wharf, on the track that goes from Wharf down to the road at Silleth, just to the east of Ostwick, there's this barn, Dam House Bridge Barn, which to all intents and purposes looks like a late 18th or early 19th century barn. Again, it's been recently restored by Stories in Stone. The roof is fairly modern. It was re-roofed, not sure when, in the late 20th century. The outshot to the right of the cart arch there has some reused timbers and looking inside the barn inside the cart door on the bottom picture you can see a very uneven timber anything but straight with several peg holes in it that is a reused timber and that's oak and that was dated and the f that timber was felled between 1411 and 1477 between newby heads and twistleton way down below towards Ingleton, and between Ribblehead and Southside, Lower Berkwith, there are something like, well, 40 to 44 farms, farmsteads that have disappeared in the last 150 years. 
Some are just houses now, just where somebody lives. Some have been reduced to barns, like Ribblehead House. Some are just a heap of ruins. Some of them, there's basically nothing left. This map, which is a, a, an estate map, as it says, for South House Estate, which is down at the bottom there, number two, three, and four, shows near 28 and 26, it says Springs. Now, there's the old road that comes from Clapham, up Old Road, over Sulber, comes down through a gate at Springs and then turns north past Borins, well, well, parallel to Borins and Gilgarth, and heads north past Selside. And as the map says there on the top left, to Dent, that was the old Clapham Dent Road. The road on the right, which is between numbers, say, 22 and 15, field numbers 22 and 15, that's the present road from Horton Ribblesdale up to Ribble Head, which in fact at that time didn't go to Ribble Head. So Springs Farm was a farm, a discrete farm, in 1755. We don't know when it stopped being a farm, but if you if you walked up that track now, past it, particularly in summer, the vast majority of people wouldn't realise there was anything there. In winter, when the grass is low, you can see a very vague earthwork. And there are lots of these farms that disappeared because they were just became unviable, they were too marginal, or there was no water, or they were bypassed by later roads. There's been a lot of change in the landscape. A farm that disappeared much more recently is this one here, which was Arco Farm. And on the left of the picture is Arco Quarry, as it was in 1963. It wasn't long after this picture was taken that the quarry expanded eastwards across the valley floor and the farm was, was demolished so it's long since gone. Just one of many farms as I say that have disappeared. Southern Scales, which is now just a, a, a holiday home for, for a family. Southern Scales we saw in video three as an Anglo-Saxon settlement. During the monastic period Southern Scales, the farmstead, was the centre of Southern Scales, the larger estate. It's had a recorded history from 1189 as a farmstead up to 1537 under the Furness Abbey. It remained a farmstead way beyond that. It was rebuilt in its present form with the porch added and the bay on the right, the three windows on the right added. It was rebuilt, re enlarged in 1765 by Robert and Mary Metcalf, whose initials are on the date stone above the door. But there's still evidence there of a much earlier house that's not on this picture. It stopped being a farm in 1955. Other evidence of landscape management in the past that's, that really is a thing of the past, it's, it's the distant memory or a completely forgotten aspect of past life, was the salving of sheep. These days it's all done in the farmsteads. A few years ago they used to use horrible smelling chemicals but historically, going back as long as, who, who knows how long back, up till the 40s or even the 1940s, 1950s, they used to dunk the sheep in a beck. And on the left there is Middle Washfold near Colt Park. The stream is just out of sight. It disappears into a cave. The little gap in the wall there on the left is where they would push the sheep through one by one into the water and the men would just scrub the sheep, dunk the sheep and then turf them out. And the wall on the right of that leading into the, the sheepfold there, or the washfold as this would be called, was the driving wall so you could drive the sheep in, collect them in there, put them in one by one. The picture top left is washfold um, which is on the way just off the footpath going up Ingleborough from the Hill Inn. The water there is disappearing into a cave. This is a very dry period but they used to dam the entrance to the cave there as they did with the one on the left build up a, a pond behind it and do the same thing there chuck the sheep in off that rock platform you can see in the wall give the sheep a good scrub and off they went that was replaced in the late 19th century very late 19th century by what you can see on the bottom right there two coppers as they're called two cauldrons and below it there was a, a fire like a furnace the water was heated the salve was melted in there and they used to just sort of manually scrub the sheep there. That is, since I took that photo, it has collapsed. So you've got all these, these evidence of, of past farming practices and they have just gone. They have just been lost. And if you 
know what to look for or if you come across them by accident there are on Ingleborough and just across on scales more there are five leets or water channels like this one here now this one comes from the rock on the right hand edge of the photograph bottom right it goes to the ranging pole and then it divides into two one branch shoots away from the camera curving round by that ruined building which is or was uh, for grouse shooters a shooting cabin the other branch goes over the second stone and heads off the picture to the left about halfway up the the view there there's another one that goes all the way down from little ingleborough to clapdale there's one that goes off green hill all the way down to philpin in uh, uh, just at chapel dale there's one that goes all the way across scales moor to the old farms of middle high and low scales there's another one that goes across from Kingsdale and the fifth one that I know of comes from the foot of Wernside to Broad Rake. Now these were all built to carry water, to tap water from streams or springs up the fell and to take it to farmsteads. They're quite narrow, they're quite shallow, obviously they've silted up over the years. This particular one wasn't going down to a farmstead, it was going to the shooting cabin to take water to the shooting cabin and I think the branch going off to the left of the picture which follows a line of grouse butts was acting as a drain to make it drier for the the grouse the people with the guns as they're called some of them are medieval in origin this one presumably dates from when grouse shooting started which was what in the 1790s round about there something else that, that's disappearing from fault memory is these water channels the the engineering that just it's just remarkable when you look at them in detail pete just mentioned it there with the shooting box pete is a thing of the past pete cutting on the top right there you've got an old pete pot as they were called so again everybody within a particular manor or township was allocated their turbery ground their peat ground and they'd go in the summer cut the peats stack them dry them and then use them over the winter for the domestic fires and whatever the one the photo on the top left hinkinshaw peat road is a road that's been cut through limestone pavement from crummock crummock dale going up to hinkinshaw which was a, another of these turbary grounds bottom right there is another relic of the important grouse shooting area to see grouse up there this is mooton to see grouse up there now you'd be very lucky the last grouse shooting up there was in the 1960s, but that's a grouse butt. And you find these that ruined shooting cabins and ruined grouse butts all over the place because shooting was an important industry, activity, source of income for the estates. Roots, old roots. There are a number of old roots. There's the old, I've already mentioned in this presentation, the old Clapham to Dent Road. There were private carriage roads. There were public roads. And we've got here evidence of three roads which are of, of all you can say is they're of great antiquity. The top left there, Clapper Bridge in Crummockdale at Washdub, they're impossible to date, absolutely impossible to date. But they're simply slabs of flagstone laid on top of boulders and you just sort of walk the plank as it were. The two other pictures there, uh, you can see the sunken grooves, One, the bottom one going up more or less parallel to the dry stone wall, the other one going through the middle of the picture. These are called hollow ways, hollow ways as in Holloway prison, sunken tracks. Medieval in origin, you can see the later road on the left of the top right photo going up through to Crummock Farm. Hollow ways were used and when they got too muddy or too wet or too slippery, you'd simply make a new route and you sometimes find as you have on both those photos not just one holloway but a series of holloways going uphill where the combination of countless hooves and flowing water deepened the gullies out and you also have occupation roads which were during the enclosure process in the late 18th century around here where the land was divided up into individual fields and the occupation roads led from the settlements to the open stinted pastures beyond. 
so that the, the farmers with the, with the land furthest or the farmers with land or with gates on the open pastures could take their stock up there without interfering with other people's fields. This one is Southside Lane going from where people park if they're going to Allen Pot or Longchurn Cave. Then there's the, the, the old turnpike road that's now called Old Road that goes from Clapham to Ingleton. This was created as a turnpike in 1753. It was rerouted to where the A65 goes now in 1792. But these two sticky out stones are or were mileposts. The one at the top is too far into the wall to see any number on it, but the one at the bottom, you've got a nine there. On the other side, it's eight. So nine miles to uh, Kirby Lonsdale, eight miles to settle. The funny thing about this one, you can see the nine there is at right angles. If, if you take the stone out of the wall and stick it vertically the nine is at right angles to the vertical plane the eight isn't so you've got a lot of evidence in the dales of past human activity the evidence is there if you know what to look for and if you don't go when the grass is really high